Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. One of the biggest misconceptions of building a capsule wardrobe is that it has to be all neutral, colorless and monochromatic. I mean, I completely get it. I've been a walking capsule wardrobe cliche for years in that sense. And of course, these are colors that never date. They're timeless colors. They're easy to combine, which adds that layer of versatility into the whole thing, which is super important when you're building a capsule wardrobe and the longevity and sustainability aspect, which is also super important. The vast majority of you know, capsule wardrobe guides and capsule wardrobe overviews that you will find on, for example, Pinterest will all sort of look like this, but it certainly doesn't have to mean that this is how your personal capsule wardrobe should look. Your capsule wardrobe should always reflect you, your lifestyle and your preferences. And it should always at all times be able to meet your own personal needs. So to refrain from making the mistake of copying someone else's colorless capsule wardrobe, when in fact you do love wearing a bit of color, um, there are a few steps that we should be looking into. And that is of course what today's video is going to be all about. How you can mindfully add colors to your own capsule wardrobe. The first and most important thing is to find your dominant color type. Your dominant features and the relationship between these features like your hair color, your eye color, skin color will tell you exactly which colors work best for you. So I've been trained at the Color Me Beautiful Academy. I recently became a color consultant and there we work with six different dominant color types. Now all of these color types are based on the Munsell color system. This means that you can basically wear any color you want, but it all comes down to the version of that specific color. So you simply want to find that right version of that specific color you might be looking at just to make sure that it really complements you and also that you don't end up getting tired of this color in the long run because I feel like that is something that's a mistake that we've all made from time to time. We see a color on someone else and we think wow that is a beautiful color we buy it for ourselves and then we just figure out this just doesn't work for me or we just end up getting tired of that color super quickly. So I truly believe that the colors that work for us physically will also work better for us mentally, especially in the long run as well. So according to the Munsell color system, we have six different dominant color types that we work with. We work with the depth of the color. So you can be either a light dominant color type or you can be a deep dominant color type. There's also the undertone, which is also known as the hue of the colors, which means that you can either be a warm color type or a cool color type. Lastly, we work with the clarity of the colors. So you can either be a clear color type or you can be a soft color type. If you're a clear, for example, the muted colors will make you look drained. So you'll want to make sure that you wear vibrant colors with a lot of contrast to really complement your natural features. So when we're choosing colors, it's just really important that we choose colors that work naturally in harmony with our natural features, which again is something I really love about this system. Finding your best colors may help you narrow down the endless possibilities that they're out there. So it will truly teach you the art of limitation. So hopefully when figuring out your dominant color type, you'll stop wasting time, energy, and valuable resources on buying everything from clothing to makeup in the colors that are wrong for you, which again, seen from a sustainability perspective is super important. If you would like to learn more about determining your dominant color type, be sure to check out my online course, which has a completely new and updated lesson all about finding your dominant color type. You can go for the entire Style Masterclass if you'd like to learn everything from decluttering your wardrobe to finding your current style, better shopping habits, how to care for your wardrobe, and then finding out your dominant color type and some different styling tips. If you'd like to just stick with the talk about colors, make sure you check out lesson four. I will link all the details you need to know down below. 
So the second tip is to start small. Now you'll notice, especially if you go and have your color type analyzed, this is also something that I offer both virtually and in my studio here in Denmark, you will look at your wardrobe in a completely new way. Take this from someone who usually wears no colors whatsoever, someone who loves to wear monochrome and neutral outfits. It's likely that you'll be very keen on adding just a few colors to your wardrobe, especially when you know exactly what your dominant color type is. Otherwise, I'm guessing you probably wouldn't even be watching this video in the first place, right? Having said all this, I always advise you to start small. Even if you're just starting out with a capsule wardrobe and you really want to make better fashion choices in the future, you really want to invest in some better quality items, always start small and look at this as a process. I absolutely don't want you to rush out and buy a completely new wardrobe, especially seen from a sustainability perspective. I often mention this, but one of the most sustainable things we can do is to wear what we already have in our wardrobes. So start with what you have and then start adding some items that you can wear close to your face. So that could be a scarf, maybe, maybe even a basic t-shirt like I'm wearing today. Anything that you can wear close to your face where the color would really have a huge impact on your appearance. You can even see if you can find the specific color you're looking for in a thrift shop, for example. I'm sure you'd be able to just to add another layer of sustainability to it. So for me personally, this has been an eye opener, especially when looking at my basic colors. So for example, I tend to always wear black. But a navy, dusty navy blue like this is a really nice way to still get that element of basic into my outfits, but just going for something that's a bit more soft and something that complements my natural features a bit more. So I'm definitely going to focus on adding a few items that I can wear close to my face, like I just mentioned before. I'm also going to be focusing on adding items that I can wear for special occasions, like a say a job interview or maybe a speech that I'm doing about colors, for example. And if I have a client where I'm doing a color analysis, I definitely want to make sure to wear one of my best colors just to set a great example, you know, so people can really see what the right colors can do to us. And I really want to be able to walk the talk. I hope you guys see where I'm going with this. On the contrary, though, if there is a color in my wardrobe like black, for example, I love black and I truly believe that anyone can wear black. If I have a color in my wardrobe that I love that theoretically doesn't work for me, I'm still going to wear that item. I just mentioned before the most sustainable thing you can do is to wear what you already have. So that's what I'm going to do, seen from a sustainability as aspect and also just because I love my wardrobe. But, you know, something to just think about for the future or for future references to maybe move that color further away from my face. Black, you know, I can wear a black bottom, I can wear black shoes, black accessories, and then I can focus on wearing the colors that bring out my natural features and that complement me, work in harmony with my face, closer to my face. Another thing you could do is to rethink your basics moving forward. So I often hear that people easily get bored with their style or they just feel like they are a bit too casual, a bit meh when they look at their wardrobe. So a, a solution to this could definitely be to rethink your basics. So instead of always going for the same, um, maybe to you, boring <laughs> white, black or gray colors, go for some colors that complement your natural um, dominant color type. Again, like I just mentioned before, for me, that could be something like going for a dusty navy color instead of always going for black. So having said all this, this has all been such a learning curve for me and it will be for you as well, especially when you really start getting into it and especially when you really start seeing what difference the right colors can make for you. Again, I have clothing in my wardrobe that doesn't necessarily suit my dominant color type. And that's okay too. But I know that there are some of you who definitely need some help on figuring out what, what is it that makes me feel great. And figuring out your dominant color type is definitely something that can help you in that process. So it's just really important for me to, to throw this into the video as well, just to, to give you a bit of a disclaimer and also just to, to, to share with you my, my own thought process, especially after figuring out my own dominant color type and now that I'll be working with this as a service to my to my business. Speaking of using what you already have first and foremost, I'm sure many of you already have a bunch of lovely colors within your wardrobe that also suit your dominant color type. This is something we often see. 
Um, so be sure to really dig deep into your wardrobe and focus on that on those colors if that's what you want to be looking at. If you have a capsule wardrobe like me where you tend to store away items from season to season, be sure to go into your storage boxes as well because I'm sure you have some, some lovely items in there already in, in the colors that you might be looking for. So I hope you guys see where I'm going with this and just to sum up, start small, enjoy the mindful process that I think it should be to inject more colors into your wardrobe. So, you know, have fun with it, enjoy it, but be mindful as well. The final tip that I wanted to share with you today is all about creating versatile and amazing color combinations. In my opinion, the best combinations will come almost naturally to you when you know your dominant color type. Again, just to give you guys an example, if you're a soft color type, the soft and blended colors will work better for you. So you look amazing in tonal outfits, for example, because it will work very well with your with your blended features. If you're a clear, on the contrary, you want to make sure that there's a big contrast between the different colors that you wear. Again, just to make sure that they work in harmony with your naturally contrasting features. So this obviously goes for both, you know, the colors that might be combined in a print and also if you're combining blocks of color in an outfit. So again, like I just said before, combining colors and, you know, nice nice color combinations within your wardrobe will become second nature to you when you know your dominant color type. And that's really the goal, isn't it? To build a functional and stylish wardrobe that is super versatile and easy for you to style. It should be effortless and fun to get dressed in the morning. It definitely shouldn't be stressful for you. If you need some inspiration on great color combinations though, go to Pinterest, highly likely to be your best tool and your best friend. So you can search for a specific color that you like, let's say dusty rose, for example, or even by keywords such as, you know, vibrant color combinations or soft color combinations, tonal dressing or similar keywords like that. This is such a logical way of working with colors for me. And even though a color analysis is definitely not a new thing, it's something that people have been doing for decades. It's actually kind of old school. I remember my mom had one of the original Color Me Beautiful books on her bookshelves in the 90s. I just never thought I'd be having so much fun with it, even though I'm still, you know, going for these sort of basic colors. It's just, it just means so much, you know, a basic color is not just a basic color. So I feel like I've truly witnessed on my own how much of a difference it makes for your both physical appearance but also your mental well-being to, to you know, get your best colors demonstrated and to go through a color analysis. So getting your colors done and getting your color type analyzed is definitely something that started to, to get its comeback now I feel. Oh. So my battery just died on me in the middle of my outro there. Generally today, most clothing is not made for us as individuals, you know? It, we have to sort of fit within a standard scale when it comes to sizing. And, and I feel like through all this, we've, we've kind of lost the respect for the craftsmanship that goes into what we wear. And I definitely think that working with colors in this way that I've, I've been talking about in this video is one way of taking back control of what we wear rather than letting the industry persuade us to to you know consume things over and over again that doesn't necessarily serve us um, so it's definitely time to slow down and i feel like this way of working with colors will definitely help you stop wasting time money and valuable resources on the wrong clothing so with that I really hope you guys feel as inspired as I do. Don't forget to check out my online style masterclass or maybe you want to get your colors analyzed by yours truly. Check out the description box down below. With that, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for spending a bit of your day with me here today. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you very soon for another video. Bye guys.